Asta is back, baby, and Tabata just confirmed the truth. God killer Asta is literally a glitch in the Matrix, the only person capable of bringing down a god like Lucius. And the real reason for Asta's incredible godly power is directly related to the Wizard King Julius and the Time Devil Astaroth. Don't believe me? Just stick around until the end of the video because this will blow your mind. You guys know the drill, if you enjoy our Black Clover content and you want us to keep it going, leave a quick like and comment right now. It takes you like a second, but it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you watch my videos, but you still haven't taken the time to subscribe yet, make this the video that you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. Subscribing on YouTube is completely free, but it's a great way of supporting the channel directly. Finally, this video will of course contain Black Clover manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution. You have been warned. As we know, the final battle inside the Clover Kingdom capital has been raging for quite a while. Lucius and his paladins have been facing off against Yami and the other Magic Knight captains, plus Yuno, Noel, Meadow Leona, and many others. Even though some of the world's strongest mages are fighting against him, Lucius has been swelling the ranks of his paladins by reviving overpowered mages who died years ago, like Morgan and Asie Silva. The battle has been extremely intense, and we've seen some incredible moments with Yuno, Yami, Meadow Leona, and of course with Noel facing off against her long dead mother. And okay, Jack, I'll give a shout out to Jack too. But there still remains one glaring absence on the battlefield. That absence is of course Asta himself, who is still stuck all the way on another continent, so far away that even conventional spatial magic cannot reach him. Back in chapter 360, we were once again reminded that Asta is extremely important to this final battle. In his own inner monologue, Lucius concludes that the current reality of the world is defying all of his many predictions for how things were supposed to go. A lot of events and scenarios are not unfolding as Lucius had been expecting them to, and the common factor in all of them seems to be Asta himself. Asta is like a glitch in the Matrix someone who isn't influenced by Lucius's time magic, and someone who remains a wild card in all of this. And not only is he himself a wild card, but by influencing the world and the people around him, he is also driving all of them to reach levels of power that Lucius couldn't have predicted. Asta is a big problem for Lucius. He is a crack in Lucius's bulletproof master plan, and that crack appears to be growing and spreading. The latest chapter starts off with Lucius lying dead on the ground after a massive attack from Yuno left him essentially cut in two. And yes, Lucius really is dead here. So it's technically not the manga equivalent of clickbait, although it's still kind of clickbait. Just as Yuno says, I win, Lucius appears behind him and attacks him yet again. Yuno is stunned because he knows that him killing Lucius was not an illusion. That was the real body of Lucius, and Yuno really did kill it. Yuno is right. That really was his real body, but so is this second one. Lucius reminds everyone that he possesses soul, body, blood, and bone magic all at once, and this allows him to literally clone himself. He can create not one, but multiple perfect clones of himself, and even if one of the bodies is killed, the other bodies will just carry on as usual. So, even though Asta's influence has been messing with Lucius' prediction abilities, and even though he is facing scenarios that he was unable to anticipate, he is still confident. Even if he is faced with events that he cannot anticipate, and even if these events lead to his death, he still has backup bodies ready to continue his sacred mission. Who knows, he might have even hidden some clones away in the middle of nowhere, where no one will be able to find him, even if every single clone who is on the battlefield now ends up getting destroyed. But on the other hand, he may not even need those hidden clones because he has at least a dozen clones on the battlefield right now. And with how much the mages of the Clover Kingdom have struggled with even one Lucius, it's hard to imagine that they would stand a chance against like 12 of them. Lucius acknowledges that Yuno was a strong opponent, but the odds that Yuno and the others are facing are just impossible. Lucius considers himself to be a literal god, and no matter how strong a magic knight becomes, there is still a world of difference between even the strongest magic knight captain in history and an actual god. When they see all those Lucius clones appear, 
Many of the Magic Knights begin to despair and lose hope because their chances of success appear to be just about zero at this point. However, our girl Noelle refuses to quit and she implores the others to follow her lead because there's still hope. The key to finding that hope lies in the Witch's Forest, where the rest of the Black Bulls are currently located. Led by Vanessa, they have come to see the one person who can help them locate Asta and bring him back to the Clover Kingdom in time. That person is none other than the mysterious and powerful Witch Queen. Yo, I was honestly really glad to see the Witch Queen finally return to the story. She first appeared way back in chapter 82, but then she effectively disappeared from the story for a very long time. Because of how clearly powerful she was and how mysterious and interesting of a figure she is in the Black Clover world, I was really hoping that she would make a comeback and that we would learn more about her and her powers eventually. So yeah, I am really glad to see that now in the final arc and during the final battle, the Witch Queen has returned. And I mean, it also doesn't hurt that she's totally a MILF, but let's move on. The Black Bulls asked the Witch Queen for help in finding Asta, but she already foresaw that they were coming. She confirms that Asta is indeed alive and that he is in a distant foreign land. The Black Bulls, who up to this point weren't sure that Asta was still alive, are very happy to hear this news. But even though there's good news, there's also bad news. Asta is simply too far away to just travel back within a reasonable time frame, at least in terms of travel by conventional means. Luckily for the Black Bulls, the Coral Peacock Captain Dorothy Unsworth, who just happens to be an overpowered witch herself, is also there inside the Witch's Forest along with the Witch Queen. Dorothy knows that in order to defeat Lucius, they need to bring Asta back as soon as possible. As the one whose future cannot be seen by Lucius, Asta is everyone's best hope for taking down such an absolutely broken, godlike villain. And Dorothy believes that if the three most powerful witches of all time work together, they can bring Asta back. By the three most powerful witches, she means herself, the Witch Queen, and best girl Vanessa. This is certainly a special moment, because the Witch Queen reveals that this is the first time that Dorothy has returned to the Witch's Forest after leaving on her own a long time ago. And because of the immense importance of this moment and the world-breaking consequences of the ongoing final battle against Lucius, the Witch Queen agrees to help bring Asta back. In the next scene, we see a giant mirror-like gate on one end of a large room. And a whole bunch of witches are spread around the room in a circle, including of course the three strongest witches. All the witches will now focus in on Finral's magic in order to amplify it many times over, allowing him to invoke a super compound magic spell called Door of Destiny. Finral is a bit concerned that he is about to be like sacrificed or something, but Dorothy tells him to just think of the person he wants to meet, and he will meet them. In the final panels of the chapter, we see Asta back in Hino country. He is putting on his Black Bull's robe and preparing to depart. Asta is finally back in the story, and he knows that the time to return to the Clover Kingdom has come. With the help of Finral's spatial magic and the amplifying power of dozens of the world's strongest witches, a magic portal is about to be opened all the way to Hino Country, and this will allow Asta to make it back in time for the final battle. Man, it's been a while since we've gotten to see Asta, and I'm glad that he is finally back. We all know that he is crucial for this final battle, and Tabata has done a good job of reminding us of that fact over and over again, including in the last few chapters. But this makes me wonder, why is Asta so special? I mean, of course, he's the protagonist of the manga, so we as manga readers know that he is special. But why is he so special within the story itself? Why is he special in the diegetic sense? Why is Asta literally some sort of glitch in the Matrix and seemingly Lucius's single biggest weakness? Is it all just a huge cosmic coincidence? Well, if you've been following this channel and my Black Clover content, you know that I've had a theory for quite a while. I believe all of this is leading up to one big reveal, and that is that Asta's existence is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. I believe that Asta was artificially created as the ultimate weapon that would eventually defeat Lucius. I think Asta was born to be the anti-magic using God Killer. And if this is true, then who could have created him and how? 
My theory is that Julius is Asta's father and that he created Asta in order to stop Lucius's master plan. Because they share the same body, Julius knew that Lucius was planning to take over the world for literally decades. And so he worked in secret together with Lichita to create someone who could be immune to Lucius's time magic power. Someone whose future can't be seen and who is therefore everyone's best hope of defeating Lucius. Asta was born as an anomaly, the only human without any magic whatsoever, and that was no coincidence. Lichita's unique absorption power, combined with the power of Julius, allowed Asta to be born the way he was. In fact, Julius may also be the father of Liebe, the only devil without magic power who eventually developed the overpowered ability known as anti-magic. My theory is that the time devil Astaroth was involved in the creation of both Asta and Liebe. And in fact, Astaroth's soul may have been split into two by Julius, and the two halves became Asta and Liebe. Time magic itself was kept inside of Julius' own body, that's why Lucius can still use it, but in its place, we witness the development of anti-magic, the one ability that is resistant to time magic. What do you guys think of this? Is the fact that Asta is a glitch in the Matrix and Lucius' is ultimate weakness just a really big coincidence? Or is it possible that Asta was literally created for the specific purpose of becoming the god killer who will defeat Lucius? Could Liebe also be a similar creation? Is the Time Devil Astaroth involved in all of this? Don't forget to leave your feedback down in the comments below. I can't wait to see what happens in the next chapter. If you guys enjoy our Black Clover content and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment right now. And if you watch my videos but you haven't taken the time to subscribe yet, do me a big favor and subscribe right now and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. Over 50% of you guys who watch my videos are not subscribed. Subscribing is free and it would help me out a lot, so please do it right now. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys.